Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to create a lockpick system for your game. So this is basically what it will look like when it's all finished. Um, it's very similar to the Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 uh, lockpicking system where you have this bobby pin, which you can control with the right mouse. And the idea is to get the bobby pin in the correct spot to be able to pick the lock. So you kind of guess where the bobby pin should be, and then you hold down space to move the lock. And you can see if the bobby pin's not in the right spot, like it's not right now, the bobby pin will start to jitter a little bit to let you know that hey it's not in the right spot. So if you move it a little bit and once you start getting closer to the correct spot you'll see the lock starts to move when you hold down space. So if you move it a little bit more you can see we're getting closer, move it a little bit more, closer, a little bit more, and there. So that's the sweet spot and we pick the door. You can see door picked at the top left. And then each time you do it it just randomizes where the um, lock will open at. And so yeah, it's very similar to the Fallout system. Um, you'll be able to configure it to be easy, medium, or hard. I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so I guess with that being said, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this completely from scratch. So we're going to need to launch a new instance of Unreal. So open the Epic Game Launcher. And I'm on version 4.24.1. So I would recommend being on that one or a newer one, just so you don't have any issues following along. And then select Games and hit next, and we want to use first person, and hit next. And we want to be with starter content, so make sure you have with starter content selected, because that's where our door comes from. And we're going to want to change this to, uh, I'll just call it lock picking, and then hit create project. So one thing I want to mention real quick is that uh, this is a pretty it's not like super complicated, but it is going to be a long tutorial because there's a lot of stuff to it. So I apologize if I accidentally mess something up. Because um, even though I'm kind of working off an existing project, it's it's still a lot of stuff to remember to do in the correct order. So I apologize if I stumble through something. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually we need to import the models for the lock and like the screwdriver and the bobby pin so that we'll be able to work with those. And to do that, um, Let's just come back here to the content directory, just so we can stay a little bit organized. We'll create a new folder um, that we're going to put all of our lock picking stuff in. So we'll just call it lock picking. And inside here, we'll make another new folder for the lock, which is basically going to be all the assets associated with the lock. So then inside the lock folder uh, is where you're going to want to import the assets. So the assets are going to be available in the description of this video. They're totally free to use. Um, they're just assets that my buddy made for me specifically for this use case. So huge shout out to him. Um, but anyways, it should look something like this. You should have like a lock pick or a lock pick set folder, or I don't know, I might rename it, but inside of the folder that you download, it will have uh, these four FPX files and then a handful of uh, textures to go with them. So just follow along as I import these because there's some settings and like some properties that you need to change along the way. So we'll start with the bobby pin. So drag in the bobby pin. And then back over here, uh, the one thing we want to change is we want to make the uniform scale set that to 10, um, just so it's a little bit bigger and easier for us to work with. And we'll say import all. And we'll do, I guess we'll just do all the FAX files first. So um, we can also drag in the lockpick base and the lockpick cylinder uh, at the same time. And we can set those to 10 as well. Make sure you have those set to 10 as well. And then for the screwdriver, go ahead and drag that in. And we want that one to be set to five for the uniform scale, because we actually are going to scale it down a little bit so it fits more nicely in the screen. And we will say import all. All right, so now we have all the static meshes and all the materials. The next thing we need to do is set up the materials to use all these textures. So select all the textures, and we can just drag them all in at once. And for the ones that have occlusion, roughness, metallic at the end of them, so this one, this one, and this one, uh, we need to actually change them to be masks because the RGB channels represent masks for the metallic roughness and the ambient occlusion. So if you click on all of them and go to uh, asset actions and I believe bulk edit via property matrix, it will pop up this little window. And I don't know where this setting is exactly, so bear with me while I try to find it. Um, I 
Ah, okay, so here it is. It's the uh, compression setting under compression. Uh, we want to change this to masks to let them know that they're masks. So set it to masks. And then just do a file save all real quick so all these changes get applied. So we need to fill out these materials. So we'll start with the bobby pin, uh, open this guy up, and just make it a little smaller so we can drag into it. So we want to drag in the bobby pin, the three bobby pin textures. So drag those in. And we can delete this default parameter that creates because we don't need it. And we can just set these up. So the base color will go into the base color. The normal one will go into the normal. And this one, the red, is going to go into the metallic. The green is going to go into the roughness. And the blue is going to go into the ambient occlusion. And we can apply and save that. So you can see if we look at our bobby pin now, uh, it's nice and shiny. And now we want to do the same thing for the lock and the screwdriver. So open up the lock and drag it like this. And then we'll say lock, lock, lock. Drag those in. And over here, delete this. I'm just going to do the exact same thing we just did. So base color, normals, and red goes into metallic, green goes into roughness, and blue goes into ambient occlusion. And apply and save that. And then if we look at our lock, you can see it looks textured. And this is the outside of our lock. And for the inside of our lock, also it looks pretty good. And the last one we need to do is the screwdriver. So open up the screwdriver material, drag it over here, and then do screwdriver, 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 drag those in. And this is the last one, I know it's a little tedious, but drag those in, and base color goes into base color. Uh, that's the wrong one. Normal goes into normal, and then red goes into metallic, green, goes into roughness, and blue goes into ambient occlusion, and apply, and save that. Okay, so if we look at the screwdriver, just to make sure, our screwdriver now looks pretty spiffy. Um, I think that's it. Okay, so yeah, we'll go back to the content directory now. Um, so we have all the static meshes and materials imported that we're going to need inside of our lock picking lock folder. Uh, and we might as well go ahead and set up a door at this point as well, since we're just kind of setting things up. So right click and we'll create our door. And this is just gonna, it's not gonna like open or close or anything. Uh, if you want a tutorial on how to make a door that open and closes, um, you can actually, I have a tutorial on that. I'll link it in the description. I'll try to remember to do that for how to make a door that opens and closes. But for this one, it's just going to be um, something that we can use to invoke the lock picking UI to pop up. So in here, we'll just create a simple little blueprint um, called, or of an actor type, and we'll call it DP door. And inside of here, uh, we want to create two static meshes. So say add static mesh, and again, add static mesh, and make sure they are like this and they're not parented like this. So if it is parented like this, just drag it and attach it to the root. So this one is going to be the door frame, and this one's going to be the door itself. So for the door frame, we're going to select the static mesh for the door frame, and for the door, we're going to select the static mesh of the door. And then go ahead and kind of drag it over so it fits. You might have to change this to 5 so it fits more nicely, like so. And for right now, that's all we're going to do with the door. Um, eventually we'll be adding a little bit more functionality to this to have it be able to be lockpicked, but for now that's good. Um, so the way the lockpicking is going to work is we're basically going to create an interface called like the lockpicking interface, and any actor like the door that implements that interface will be able to be lockpicked. So to do that, uh, obviously we need to create the interface first. So come back here to the lock picking folder and right click and go to blueprints and select blueprint interface and we will call this the lock pick interface and inside of here we just want to define two functions that everybody who implements this function is going to need to define themselves so we'll say get difficulty 
And basically this function is just going to return the difficulty of the lock, so how hard it is to lock pick. And then we want another one called on picked. And this function is going to be called whenever the lock is successfully picked. And compile and save that. So one thing we need to do real quick is the, the get difficulty needs to actually return the difficulty value. So we want an output parameter for it. And we could just add an integer value and say it returns one if it's easy, two if it's medium, three if it's hard, or something like that. But just to like make it a little bit more clear, I'm going to use uh, enums for this instead. So I'm going to go back to the content browser, and then right next to it, I'm going to right-click and create a new blueprint enumeration. And I'll call this lockpick difficulty. And open this up. And we want to add three... Uh, different difficulties. I'm just going to do easy, medium, and hard. So select or hit new three times, and we'll call the first one easy. Call the next one medium, and the next one hard. And again, feel free to make you know however many of these you want. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to stick with easy, medium, and hard. All right, so we can close that enum, and then back in the interface, we're going to add an output parameter to our difficulty. And it's going to be of type lock pick difficulty. And it's going to be called difficulty, like so. And make sure you compile and save this before you close it. And then back in the door, now we can add that interface. So up here at the top, we'll say class settings. And there's a section on the right for interfaces. And we want to add the lockpick interface and then on the right here you can see it adds a little interface category and if you right click on this and double click on get difficulty it will open up the get difficulty function that it has created and basically from here you can return whatever you know easy medium hard or however difficult you want it to be for the door um, so if you had like a safe in your game you could maybe make safes medium or hard and you can make doors easy or you do it however you want um, if you want to get like really uh, specific with it and make different doors, different levels of difficulty. Um, I'm not going to do that, but I'll show you how just in case you want to. You can just right click on the difficulty and promote it to a variable and just call it, you know, lock difficulty. And then if you click this little eye right here, it will expose it so that'll be editable per instance. So then if you were to compile and save it and then go back to the game, um, if you drag a door into the world, which you probably should do, um, you can see over here on the right, when you select the door, you can change the difficulty of the lock. So if you had two doors, you know, you could have this one set to easy and you could have this one set to hard. Um, but again, I'm not going to do that just because it's, uh, it, you can do it if you want to. I just wanted to show you how. Um, I'm just going to, for now, just delete this and just return easy for the doors. Uh, all right, so we now we have our door set up and it implements the lock picking interface. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we want to know when the player walks up to the door and presses some button to try to um, lockpick it. So we're going to write that code next. So to do that, um, we're going to want to go back to the character blueprint. Well, I guess not back to because we haven't been to it yet. But back in the content directory, there's the first person BP folder and then blueprints and then first person character. So open that up. And we have all this goodness that we don't really care about right now. So down here at the bottom is where we're going to be adding our code. So it's just what we want to do is check when the player presses some button. I'm going to use F for this tutorial. So when the player presses F, we want to do a line trace into the world and check if he's looking at an item that implements the lock pick interface, like the door. And if it does, then we want to basically do some stuff, uh, which I'll show you here in a bit, to make the lock pick show up on the screen and all that jazz. So the first thing we need to do before we can check if he's pressing the key is add a key for it. So go to edit project settings and then on the left here under input we want to add an action mapping for lock picking. So hit the plus button and the name of it is going to be I guess pick lock and the key we're going to use is the F key. And Again you can use whatever key you want but I'm just going to use F. And then back in the first person blueprint we can say input action pick lock and when it is pressed we want to do a line trace so right click and say line trace by channel 
and hook that up to you pressed. So we need to fill in where the line start or where the uh, line trace starts at and where it ends at. So we basically just want it to start at wherever the camera is. So drag in the first person camera, say get world location, and we want it to end um, at some point into the world as if you were drawing an array straight from the camera directly into the world. So basically, you know, just where you're looking at. So to do that, we're going to get the forward vector of the camera, get forward vector, and we're going to multiply this by some value, um, which is basically going to be the distance. So float times, and I'm just going to use 500 right now for this tutorial, but this is essentially, you know, how far you have to wait, be away, be away from the door or the safe or whatever before you can uh, pick it or try attempt to pick it. So times 500, and we want to add that to the starting location. So vector plus vector plus vector like so, and hook that up to the end. So we got our world location as our start, and then our world location plus some amount into the world as our end. And we want to make sure that you have ignore self checked. And we can also just for now turn on the debugging to draw it for a duration, just so we can see the line and make sure everything is going the way we want it to be. And then after that, um, we want to check if it hits something. So drag off this out hit and do a break hit result. And hit this little drop down arrow so we can get access to everything. And we basically want to check if the actor that we um, that the line trace collided with implements the lock picking interface. Because if it does, then that means we want to try to lock pick it. Otherwise, we really don't care. So drag off of the hit actor, which is the actor that it hit. And we can cast this to a lock picking interface directly. Um, and to do that, you're going to have to uncheck this checkbox for context sensitive, or otherwise, I don't think it's going to show up. So say cast to lock pick interface. And we can convert this to a pure cast so that we don't have to. I think Unreal is crashing, actually. Yep. How did I know? All right, sorry about that. My Unreal just crashed. So I have to rewrite this real quick. Uh, bring that back in. Cast to uh, check this. Cast to lock pick interface. Okay, so what I was trying to say before before Unreal crashed is you can right click on this and convert it to a pure cast. So we don't need the execution lines. And we want to check if this succeeded. So drag off of the success and create a branch. So this is basically checking. Um, you know, can can this object be picked? So I'm just gonna add a little comment. Can be picked? Question mark. So if it can be picked, um, we want to save this actor that's being picked um, as the currently being picked actor. So if you right click on it and promote to a variable, we'll call this the object being picked. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to private and add it to a private. Category. Actually, I'm going to add it to a lock picking category. So lock picking category, and set that to true. So we know uh, which object is being picked. And technically, this isn't actually the object; it's the interface of the object. But that's really all we need. And then after that, um, well, we can't really do it that quite yet until we start on another aspect of it. So I'm just going to hold down C to create a comment and left click, and we'll say to do. Um, you know, try to pick lock. So we'll have to come back to this uh, later. Like I said at the beginning, this tutorial is going to be a little bit long because there's a good amount of stuff to it, and we can't really do it all at once. But we can at least test um, some stuff right now. So we can go ahead and add a print string, and I'm just going to hook it up to print out. Well, I'll just say if this is true, we'll say can be picked. And if it's false, if it's false, we'll just say can't be picked, like so, uh, just to make sure that this is working. So we go ahead and we run this, and we walk up to the door and we press F. Um, you'll see it actually said can't be picked. And you'll also notice that the line goes right through the door. It's not actually colliding with the door. And that's why it's saying it can't be picked is because it's not actually colliding with the door. So the reason it's not climbing with the door is because the door 
uh, that static mesh, this door static mesh, doesn't actually have any collision on it by default. So we need to go ahead and fix that real quick. It's really easy to do. Um, just open up the door blueprint and click on the door itself. And over here in the viewport, select this magnifying glass right next to the door so we can navigate to the door static mesh and then open that up. So here we have the static mesh for the door itself. And you go up to the top and you click on collision and then you click on show simple collision. Um, you'll see it doesn't actually show any collision and that's because there is no simple collision for the object. And that's why it's just going right through it. So we can add collision by going to collision and add box simplified collision. And you can see it adds a nice little box that uh, encapsulates our door nicely. So now if we go ahead and file save all and we come back and we play and we walk up to a door and we press F, you can see at the top left it says can be picked. And we can do that as many times as we want. If we click somewhere else, it says can't be picked. So it's correctly detecting that our door is an object that's a candidate to be lock picked, which is good. So at this point, I'm probably going to go on to part two, just so this single video doesn't get too long. So I will see you in part two.